Sir Conrad the Grim versus Glissa the Traitor. Well, we've got a few combo pieces. Well, we've got one combo piece in hand already with access to another, so we will keep. We've also got a means of grabbing a combo piece out of the graveyard if our opponent decides to blow one of them up. So let's tempt our opponent with some spot removal with the Relic of Progenitus first of all. I don't imagine they'll like seeing Relic of Progenitus in a Glissa deck. Okay, Street Wraith, let's cycle... Hmm, do we want to cycle that now? Let's go for... Yeah, we can still Vampiric Shooter after we mill with Mesmeric Orb, so let's go for the Mesmeric Orb now. An Echo Circlet. Equipped creature can <clears throat> The equipped creature can block an additional creature each combat. We don't really care about that. Let's have them exile a card from their graveyard just to tap it down for Mesmeric Orb. And I'm not going to go in for the Vamp Tutor during our upkeep, I don't think, because we're not necessarily going to draw into lands. So let's just see what we draw first. Let's cycle the Street Wraith and see if we can get into a land first of all. Okay, we can't, so... Hmm, we'll give it another turn. We might have to use the Vamp Tutor for mana, but luckily we do not. Might as well play the Codex Shredder. And then we will pass over to our opponent. Might actually be worth going for Vampiric Tutor onto Necropotence now that I think about it. Unfortunately, we'll have to do it on our upkeep after the Mesmeric Orb triggers. Getting rid of a Black Blade Reforged and a Karazda Guild Mage. And there's a Minecrank from our opponent. Looks like they're going for a combo of their own. Oh, actually, speaking of combo, yeah. I forgot about that. We've got Basalt Monolith, haven't we? So we can go for a victory now, actually. We will mill our opponent. Then ask them to exile a card from the graveyard. Oh, we don't have the win now because we don't have enough mana. Yeah, scratch that. We are going to have to Vamp Tutor during our upkeep after the Mesmeric Orb triggers, so let's just mill first. And hope that we don't mill our Basalt Monolith. A land. A Blood Chief Ascension. And a Phyrexian Arena. Some good cards gotten rid of there. Then we'll go in for Vamp Tutor. We'll grab the Basalt Monolith. And Minecrank will trigger. Whenever an opponent loses life, they mill that many. Oh, and that actually mills our Basalt Monolith, doesn't it? Ugh. Forgot about the Minecrank. Alright, well we've got Deserted Temple at least. And we can, if we get up to 5 mana, we can grab it back with the Codex Shredder. So, yeah, that feels bad, but not as bad as it would have been had we not have had the Codex Shredder. Yeah, forgot all about the mind crank there. Whenever we lose life, that player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. And down comes Glissa the Traitor. Let's mill them once. And then ask them to exile a card from the graveyard. We mill some lands and a Toxic Deluge. And get into a land, that's really good. So let's get down. Our commander. Or do we want to just go in for milling our opponent to death? I think we're up against a more casual player, so... Let's get down our commander. And we'll show you how the deck is actually supposed to function. We're supposed to get our commander down. And then mill our opponent and deal damage to them whenever a creature is milled. So we'll see if we hit some creatures here. Just looks like a whole bunch of artifacts so far. Let's mill them once more. And that time we hit a creature, so say a comrade triggers and we'll ping them. That is an iron bully. Then we'll tell them to exile again. 
A Helm of the Host coming down for our opponent. Luckily they can't equip that yet. And now they're deciding to swing him. We are not going to block because our Seer Comrade will die before we get to deal damage to Glissa. Get some mill on the go here, which will trigger Seer Comrade because we've obviously milled a creature. It's the Nether Traitor. We can get that back out of the graveyard. And then we mill some more. Our Blood Artist is now in the graveyard as well. Taking our opponent down to 25, we milled a Viscerous Seer, uh, an Ashnod's Altar, Undercity Informer, Blood Artist we've been over, there's a Lightning Greaves and a Yogmoth's Will in there as well. Now we've got Whip of Erebos, we can actually ping our opponent and gain life at the same time. But I think we want to set up for a win next turn, so let's just pass the turn over to our opponent. We'll swing in for five first. I don't think we hit a creature again there. Mark of the Vampire. Garrick Wildspeaker. A Chromatic Lantern. God Pharaoh Statue. That's really good to get rid of. And a Swamp. This time equipping the Helm of the Host. So they'll get a copy of Glissa. One Glissa swinging in while the other sits back. We lose life and mill some more. Do not hit a single creature. We get Gabal Coffers, Crypt of Agadeem and Demonic Tutor. And now we will go for our Codex Shredder, which will return Basalt Monolith to our hand. And then, target player exiles a card from their graveyard. And we will untap, doing a load of mill. Drawing to a land, we'll play that. And now, let's have a look at this Basalt Monolith combo. The thing about Basalt Monolith is that it taps for three, and it untaps for three. So all we do is tap it for three, untap it. That will trigger the Mesmeric Orb and our Seer Comrade every time we mill a creature. And hopefully our opponent yields to the Basalt Monolith trigger. Make this a lot faster. And this goes on forever. And assuming that we can hit enough creatures, which we can because we've got the, uh, the Eldrazi in the deck that shuffles graveyards, or shuffles our graveyard. So we can just do this forever. And our opponent decided to scoop it up there. We got them down to 8 before they uh, decided to call it a day. They obviously see what's going on there. We only have 25 cards left in the deck and didn't hit our Eldrazi, but assuming that we hit our... I can't remember if it's Kozilek or Ulamog, but either way, one of the Eldrazi hits the graveyard, it shuffles our library back, and then we can just carry on doing it until we hit enough creatures to ping our opponent to death. Whip of Erebos is in here to give our commander lifelink, so every time we ping our opponent we gain life. We also have Basilisk Collar in the deck for that as well, and the Exquisite Blood enchantment. And then we've got Tainted Strike to give our commander infect as well, so we only have to ping them 10 times once we've done that. Little bit of a clunky victory there, but we're obviously up against a more casual player, so we'll get some more games going with this commander if anyone wants to see them. I just wanted to show you all how the deck wins, typically. See a comrade, the Grim. Versus Child of Alara. I don't think that is too awful a hand. We're on the play, so we can get going, first of all. Now let's just drop a land, probably going in for the Oath Swarm Vampire. This is part of a combo with a Sack Outlet and Machaeus, along with one of our Drain effects. We can draw a boatload of cards with that, and drain our opponent to death. Although I suppose, oh, well speaking of which, I suppose that can be said of any non-human creature with a Sack Outlet and Machaeus. So the way the combo works is we sacrifice this with a Phyrexian Altar, and then Machaeus will bring it back into play. 
We'll sacrifice it again and then we can cast it from the graveyard and we can just keep doing that over and over again. Uh, yeah, read the bones I think is the way to go here. We need to make sure we get into lands. A crypt ghast and a swamp both being played next turn sounds good. So let's put both of these on top and draw into them. The reason Ulamog, the infinite Gaia, is in the deck is because we also have the combo of Basalt Monolith and Mesmeric Orb, I think it's called. The one that mills you every time you untap stuff. So you just keep tapping it and untapping it infinitely and keep milling yourself and eventually we will mill into Ulamog. And that will allow us to mill an infinite number of times. Anyway, what's our opponent got down? A Sylvan Karyatid into Tamio, Collector of Tales. And this does not have a limit break. Return a target card from graveyard to hand. That will come in handy for them when we mill them. They just went for the plus one there. Choose a non-land name and reveal the top four cards. Put the cards of the chosen name into hand and the rest into the bin. And they've got Liliana Vest, Teferi's Mo, Animate Dead and Journey to Nowhere in the Graveyard. Let's go for Crypt Ghast and then Expedition Map next turn will be good. We're setting up quite nicely here. We just need to see not too much ramp from our opponent. And preferably they'd struggle on their colours as well. Just hit Tamio down to four. Okay, a Fiery Covenant will get rid of some of our creatures there. And then a Bloom Tender from our opponent. I think they have got everything apart from black there. Field of Ruin can get rid of only non-basics. And that no doubt will go after our Cabal Coffers if we go for that next turn. So do we just want to play a Swamp? Yeah, I think we play a Swamp and go in for our Seer Comrade. Oh, they returned something to hand actually. Should have checked that beforehand. They go for the Fire Covenant again. So that means Seer Comrade is probably going down this turn. Oh, they can have Black Mana from the Sylvan Karyatid, can't they? Again, plusing the Tamio. And they mill a Phyrexian Metamorph, which means Comrade will deal one damage to our opponent. This thing only cares about creatures being milled, don't forget. As well as creatures coming out of the graveyard. Followed by another Planeswalker. Looks like this is Super Friends, Child of Alara. Followed by a Tamio Field Researcher. And Tamio is going to put our Seer Comrade to sleep there. Then Domri adding a green mana. So they've got two mana floating here. And deciding not to use it, we get Prismatic Vista, which means we can go for Sorin Markov and kill something off here. That can fight a creature. That can return stuff. Tamio Field Researcher can tap and it can... Yeah, target creatures dealing damage. Do they have to deal damage to... It's just combat damage, so if they deal damage to our Sorin Markov, then they will draw. And they've got some stuff to get back from the graveyard as well. Uh, yeah, I think we'll definitely go for the Prismatic Vista anyway. Then we'll go in for a Planeswalker of our own. And we'll plus him and get rid of the Field Researcher. Then we'll pass the turn like that. Might be that Sorry Markov has two damage dealt by the Bloom Tender, but at least Bloom Tender's not tapping for mana if they go for that. Looks like Child of Alara's coming down now. And that is a 7 6 with Trample. And Domri Raid has our commanders fight each other. Child of Alara stays in play though. And then Tamio using the plus one again. So let's see what's in here. Search for as counter, a couple of lands and a coercive portal. Let's encourage our opponent to use the Field of Ruin. We'll go Expedition Map. And do we want Cabal Stronghold or Coffers? We'll get six mana from Stronghold and we'll have seven mana with Cabal Coffers. 
All depends on what we want to cast. If we, yeah, we can go for say a comrade again. If we go for coffers, so let's grab that. Play the cabal coffers, and we will cast our commander again. Then with Sorin Markov, we can plus two to take him up to eight loyalty. That'll encourage Child of Alara to swing in that way. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll have to take down Domri here because we don't want Child of Alara fighting again. I'd like to get rid of Tamio, but if they go for something off of Tamio, then at least they're going to kill her off. So we'll just pass like that and see if our opponent has anything else for us. Going for Field of Ruin onto the Cabal Coffers as we thought they would, so let's get a Swamp into play. Tamio going for the plus one again, so they haven't seen anything that they like. They have milled a couple of creatures, so our Seer Comrade will trigger twice. Then casting Obnixilis reignited, so that gets rid of our Seer Comrade again. They're only going to do six damage to our Sorin Markov though, and Sorin will be able to get rid of Obnixilis next turn. Playing Expedition Map and cracking that, and just going in for Woodland Cemetery. Then the Child of Alara hitting Sorin Markov, that will take us off of the limit break next turn. But we can deal with Obnixilis at least. A Knight's nice Whisper for our opponent, taking them up to four cards. And then a Sol Ring they clearly drew into. Oblivion Stone. Destroy each non-land permanent. Unfortunately, we're one mana away from that, so let's plus and get rid of Obnixilis. And I want to surprise my opponent with this Oblivion Stone, so let's just go for Machaeus the Unhallowed. And you never know, we might draw into a sack outlet that we need to combo off with the Oath Swarm Vampire. We need to draw a few more cards though in order to make that happen. So probably not, but Machaeus is obviously a combo piece, so it might distract our opponent. In fact, we'll probably just block the Child of Alara as it swings in at Sorin. A Prophetic Prism for our opponent. When it enters, draw a card, and then it has mana filtering on it. Tamio brings back Obnixilis. They replay Obnixilis and get rid of our Machaeus. So if we get into a land here, we'll be able to O Stone and get rid of all our opponent's stuff. Really need a land. Then they make Wooburg and going for Narset Enlightened Master. Yeah, would really like to get rid of that. Oh, and we do rip into a land, that's excellent. So we go Oblivion Stone. And we sacrifice Oblivion Stone, that will blow up everything apart from lands on the board. And our opponent only has two cards left in hand. Now if we get into another land, we can play our commander. A Coalition Relic from our opponent means that they can probably get into their commander again next turn. Followed by another Planeswalker in Garrick Relentless. And they get a Wolf into play. Demonic Tutor. If we go Demonic Tutor into Cabal Stronghold, we can actually cast our Ulamog. Ulamog isn't in here to be cast, but I will cast it. Let's go Demonic Tutor. We'll play the Cabal Stronghold that we just tutored for. And then play Ulamog, the Infinite Gaia. Destroy a permanent, we'll get rid of that Garrick. Now our opponent's only got one card in hand, they're going to have to rip into something good. Because we are going to start forcing them to sacrifice things to Annihilator next turn. Putting a counter on the Coalition Relic. And they've got one card in hand, it might be an Exile effect. Our Ulamog is indestructible, so we don't really need to worry on that front. Unless they've got a Swords or something. Let's go straight through to combat. And the Annihilator trigger goes on the stack. They're sacrificing the Wolf, so that means they're not going to be able to block with it. Then a couple of basics. And what else was there? Uh, the Flooded Grove they went for as well. Probably should have played the Minecrank as well. So that we would mill our opponent. 
Let's at least attempt to see some of what our commander can do. We'll go for our commander and then we'll go in for Bloodgast and the Minecrank as well. And they didn't draw into anything. They did the right thing in playing it out but it was looking pretty slim there. Yeah, winning with an Eldrazi which I don't think I've ever done on the channel before. Like I said, that's in here as part of a combo piece so that we can mill ourselves infinitely and ping our opponents to death with Seer Comrade. But our opponent was doing a very good job of keeping our commander out of play there, so we couldn't assemble any kind of combo and had to resort to the Ulamog instead. So I'm probably splicing two games together here, one that showed you a combo and then this game which is more of a real one against a more competitive build. So hopefully you all got some enjoyment out of that. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.